But it's definitely cool. Thank you so much for inviting me on today. Like Kathy said, I am a fifth grade teacher from here in Fayette County. Um, I always, you know, I've, I've helped you all out with this event for a few years. So I always enjoy the opportunity to come and share with other educators, especially other educators here in Kentucky about different ways that they can use technology, um, whether it's 10 years ago, you know, Google Docs or Google Drive for the first time, or nowadays as you know, we've got the rise of the machines going on and uh, AI is starting to take over. Um, but uh, yeah, so long story short, um, you know, for the past, I'm going to go ahead and I think I can spotlight my screen, which makes myself a little bit bigger there. Um, so long story short, for the past, I would say since November, um, I was pretty fortunate. I, I stumbled across ChatGPT, which I'm guessing a lot of y'all have um, seen or you've had students who have shown you and you became terrified um, uh, about when you saw it. I was pretty fortunate. I was online and I saw somebody share it for the first time online. And when I looked, I said, oh, that's interesting. So I went and I, I bookmarked the page and I uh, kind of fell back to it later. Um, and as I started to play around with chat GPT more and more and more, I started to realize that things were about to change significantly, um, not just in education, but things were about to change significantly in um, in the world, because the rise of the machines, this AI stuff that you've either heard about, maybe you've got that really nerdy teacher in your building who's been playing around with it. Um, sometimes that's you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's so many different applications for what this can look like in the classroom. And this little talk that I'm going to do this morning, um, you know, I wanted to just go over a few things before we get started. Um, you know, it, I'll, I'll save some time for some questions at the end. Like, this is not a, a talk. I do have slides and a whole resource page that I'll share. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a, uh, you know, this is not a talk on how to catch your students if they're using artificial intelligence. It's not that kind of talk. Um, you know, I, we can answer some Q&A at the ends about that if you want, but this, uh, this talk that we're, I'm going to give you here in a minute, um, I wanted to go ahead and just share some practical classroom applications um, for using AI, artificial intelligence in the classroom. Um, now, what I wanted to do, let me go ahead and do this here, I don't need to share my sound. Um, I wanted to go ahead and, and, and share my screen. Now, this is a, a slideshow. Um, I will share these slides with you once we're done. Um, a lot of you, if you know my resource page, you can see the link up the top. Um, but uh, this slideshow that's right here, um, will you know, this is more of a talking point. I like to think of this slide, this, uh, this presentation is more like a, a live live demo. So um, let me go ahead and get started here. Well, the, the first thing I wanted to talk about is some of the apps that we're going to be using. And I tried to find apps that are more of the bigger ones, right? Artificial intelligence has been around for a long time. Uh, you know, just think even like on your phone, like the predictive text on your phone, or if you've ever gotten that email, maybe use Gmail. And instead of having to type out that long response, Gmail actually reads what's in that email. And uh, instead of typing out, hey, thanks, I'll be there at noon, there's a little button that you can just click that will, you know, will send that, that brief message for you. So artificial intelligence has been around for a long time, but in the past five months, really since November, I don't even know what month it is anymore, <laughs> Wait, seven months since November, um, AI has become a lot more prevalent and has started to um, make a big impact in not just education, but really a whole bunch of fields around um, both inside of education and outside of the classroom. So the four big apps we're going to be using, some of these you, you might be familiar with already. Um, ChatGPT, uh, which again, it's chat.openai.com. Guessing if you're on this call, you've probably been familiar with it. I'll show you how to get to it here in a minute. Um, Google Bard, which is bard.google.com. It was just released to the public in the last month. Um, hey, thank you, Tim Jones. I'm glad you like my, my uh, Kubrick title. I'm more of a Scorsese fan. 
but you know, we we can roll with some Kubrick. Um, but uh, mid journey, right? So most of us, when we think of AI, you probably think of um, the text generator apps like Chat GPT, Google Bard. But remember, artificial intelligence can create anything. And there's two big image generator apps that exist. And the two biggest ones, one is Midjourney, which is this one right here. The other one is Dolly, which is actually, it's by the same company that does uh, chat GPT. It's all through OpenAI. And um, I'll show you some demos of how this stuff works um, in, in a bit. So um, now, before we even dive into the demo stuff, and this is, you know, I'm a classroom teacher. I'm going into my 18th year of teaching elementary school. I'm a school technology coordinator. I've, I've had a full-time class for the last 17 plus years. Um, and I've been playing with this AI stuff since November. Um, and it's reached the point where it's not I'm just playing with it anymore. It's I've tried to figure out, okay, what are some ways that I can use these tools to one, better my pedagogy. Secondly, better my relationships from students. And a lot of that has to do with using AI to save myself time, whether it's through giving feedback to students or helping generate ideas for assignments. And just because I think that read alouds are still cool, um, you know, uh, I, I still feel like um, as, as cool as AI is, I, I still enjoy, there's nothing better to me than doing a read aloud with my students. I've got, you know, four or five, usually throughout the course of a year, I like to do four or five read aloud books with my students. So um, anyway, I like to get that stuff out of the way at the start. So most teachers, right, when they think, when they experience chat GPT or AI for the first time, have a, a pretty, pretty similar experience um, you know, they might they might have a co-teacher that's like, oh man, you got to check this thing out. And so they'll see it and then they'll, you know, they'll go ahead and like they'll copy a question or something into chat GPT, which I'll show you a demo here in a minute if you've never seen it. Teacher looks at the response that it kicks out, you're like, ah, that's, that's all right. You know, maybe that's a B at best. And then they someone says, No, 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 now try asking it to do this, or try asking it to do that. And teachers within seconds realize that, okay, then uh, the things that AI can do, um, uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, to help ourselves as educators um, are, are really phenomenal, right? So um, I look at AI, just a little bit of intro here. Like when I first discovered like chat GPT and even mid journey, some of these image generator apps, um, I think of them in the same vein as when I first discovered YouTube and Google for the first time, right? Um, you know, when I first discovered Google back when I was in college, this was 2004, 2005 ish. I remember thinking, oh, that is going to completely change the way that I access information. You know, when I stumbled across YouTube, which fun fact, if you ever want a fun trivia question or fun, um, you know, discussion at like a party or something, ask people what the first YouTube video that they remember was, but or that they, the first YouTube video that they watched was. Um, and I remember when I first stumbled across YouTube, I realized like, oh, this is going to, once again, completely change the way that people access information and tell stories. And when I discovered chat GPT and AI and mid-journey, all this stuff, I, I looked at it in the same vein as, oh, this is going to completely change things. So I, as an educator, need to ask myself, how can I use this tool to not only like help my students, but really better myself as, as a professional educator. And I also think it's interesting that uh, districts look at YouTube and Google or looked at YouTube and Google in exactly the same way that they're looking at chat GPT right now. Uh, we're not sure about this, block it. Oh, maybe it's staff only. And for what it's worth, I am totally okay. I used to not be okay with that, full disclosure. But as people are starting to figure out exactly what AI is and how to go about monitoring students and things on it, I definitely understand a lot of the concerns and things that go along with it. So a few questions to think about before you use AI, right? And then we'll get into some demo stuff here. Um, you know, when you think about technology, 
sometimes we as educators, we think like, oh, it's so cool. We just got to go ahead and use it. But hey, just because something looks cool doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to benefit student learning. So for me, right, these are kind of four big questions that I have before I want to start using AI or artificial intelligence to present a lesson. Um, one, hey, if I'm going to use AI in this activity, cool. What's the content area that, you know, what's the, sorry, what's the, uh, excuse me, what's the learning target? What's the learning objective? What's the goal? What's the swabat? Whatever the newest target, you know, the thing that we write on our board that sometimes, let's be honest, we just put up there in case the admin walks in. Um, the thing that we put on our board that's our learning target for the day, can this artificial intelligence tool, can this help me accomplish that? Um, second, what prior knowledge do my students have? And can art of AI, can it help me, um, uh, can it help me take advantage of that? Three, can AI help me um, monitor student progress? Can it, and more, I mean, honestly, probably most importantly, can it help me give my students feedback um, when it comes to formative or summative assessments? So four big questions to think about. Honestly, a lot of these, these four questions don't even just have to do with AI. It has to do with just tech tools in general. But to me, there's the four big questions to, to think about um, when you're using AI in, in the classroom. So what are some ways that this stuff actually works? And before we get to that, you know, I would be remiss because I recognize there might be some people on here and I apologize. I've got like a, a slide open in one spot and I've got it open in another. Thank you, Steve. Um, I've got slides open in one spot. So I know some of you, you might be brand new to this AI stuff. And maybe someone said like, hey, go to this session. You got to see how this stuff works. Um, so I apologize if this is really pixelated, but um, what I'm going to start off with, and I'm, I'll just post the link to this in the chat. Um, just wanted to show you all um, how chat GPT works. And I recognize that for some of you, like you've seen this before. Um, hello, Jennifer. Um, but I just pasted the link to what's called chat GPT. It is free to use. Right, you can click it. It's in the chat. I mean, it's chat.openai.com. If you go there for the first time, you can make an account. Um, there is a paid version of it. That's why mine in the middle says Chat GPT Plus. Um, if you really want to know the difference between GPT three, which is the free version, and GPT four, which is kind of the paid version, when you have the paid version, GPT three, it's about ten times faster. Um, and it also gives you access to GPT-4, which think of it as like 500 times more powerful than GPT-3. But GPT-3, honestly, it just works fine. Um, so have to start off with a little demo here if you've never seen this before. Um, and by the way, if you've never seen this before, this might be a little terrifying um, to kind of see what it, what it can do. Um, so uh, just do me a favor in the chat. Um, we're going to, we're going to have this thing really quickly. How do we know the AI isn't presenting right now? Um, it's really funny that you say that because don't be surprised if in five or 10 years, when, uh, you start to see AI video that creates where you just tell a computer, the video that you want it to make, and they'll do it. And who can imagine, I mean, imagine if you type a nerdy teacher wearing an orange shirt presenting on AI for an hour, and then boom, something like me might pop up. But anyway, so um, let's do this just, just for fun, right? Um, I'm going to have ChatGPT write a story for us. But instead of you know me telling it what to write, I'm just going to start off here uh, with a little prompt. It was a typical day. Oops, sorry. It was a typical day in Mr. Piercy's fifth fifth grade classroom when all of the sudden, so I'm going to go ahead and put that right there. Um, can you all just throw in the chat just a few things that you want to see happen? You, uh, you know, please keep it PG. Um, a bat flew in the window. I, I apologize for mispronouncing your name, Ms. Davis. A dinosaur burst into the room. Okay, we can, uh, fireworks go off, Amy Graham. So we can get creative. By the way, no celebrities. Um, they're all at the beach. It started storming. It started raining meatballs. Jack fell out of his chair. That's actually my dog's name. Pizza burned in the oven. A blue tail lizard. All right, here we go. We're, we're going to get creative. Um, when all of a sudden we'll go, a blue tail lizard 
peeked out from under the bookcase and um, Mr. Piercy was nowhere to be found. That's cute. Um, the teacher ran out of the room and we'll add that on there too. And the teacher ran out of the room for no reason. And why not? All the books came to life and all the books came to, came to life. So if you've never seen it before, how this works, um, down here at the bottom, right? Think of this as like a Google prompt, right? It's where you type the thing that you want it to do. But here's, here's what you got to remember with this, right? It is not searching the internet for this. Instead, it's going to create, right? So I've got this little prompt. It's a typical day in Mr. Piercy's fifth grade classroom. And all of a sudden, a blue tailed lizard peeked out from under the bookcase and the teacher in the classroom for no reason, and all the books came to life. This is going to be flat out ridiculous, but it's okay. So I'm going to do this, and then boom, and it's going to start out. It's going to create the story for you. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the fifth grade students in Mr. Piercy's class were all engrossed in their lessons, scribbling away in their notebooks and occasionally glancing up at the backboard. The room was filled with the usual hum of chatter and the scent of freshly sharpened pencils. However, the tranquility was shattered with a vibrant blue tail lizard unexpectedly emerged from beneath the bookcase. It suddenly appeared, caught the, the attention of several students who were excitedly pointing out to the classmates. And before anyone could react, Miss Piercy, their usually composed and steady teacher, let out a startled yelp and bolted out of the classroom. Left to their own devices, the students, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, all the books came to life. The classroom's gone. So now here, here's the best part, right? Um, okay, so Steve Green just there. Hey, can we get this in the style of a Lynn Miranda Lynn Manuel Miranda musical? So watch this, right? Because each chat GPT window, it's its own separate chat. So here on the left, you'll see it says today, right? You'll see it says today. Um, so this is like a, a discussion that I now have going on. It's almost like um, I like to think Arnold Schwarzenegger as a Terminator, but the good Terminator from Terminator 2 is on the other end, and I can tell him to keep going. So it's like we're having a discussion, right? Um, my fifth graders, they pretend that it's a butler on the other end. They call him Jeeves, and they can ask him to do stuff, right? So I can say, hey, now take this story and turn it into a Lynn manuel Miranda style musical and include, why not, the accompanying, I'm going to misspell this on purpose, accompanying chords. All right. So, boop. All right. So now it's going to take that story. And again, I don't have, actually I have a piano outside of my classroom because we're clean for the summer. But in a fifth grade classroom where the dreams come alive, a lizard with a blue tail starts a magical drive. Mr. Batisti, their teacher, runs away in surprise, leaving books to come alive before their eyes. Oh, I like this. I could feel the beat going on there. Ask Jeeves is like 25 year old. Thank you, Steve, right? But um, you get the point, right? Now, I totally get the concerns that go along with this. And to be honest, um, I don't know the answer to what that, yeah, not the chord progressions too. We could, we, honestly, you could ask to do like a one, four, five progression and it would do that as well, Jessica. Um, but uh, I definitely get the concerns that go along with this. And I've been asked a lot like, all right, so how do you stop students from cheating? I don't know the answer to that. And quite frankly, I don't know that many people do. I will say this though, all right? I will say this. Um, my students do a lot of writing. I feel like it's one of the most important skills that they, that they have. A lot of that writing takes place inside the classroom. Some of it takes place outside of the classroom. Um, I will say this, you know, if a student who I know, you know, when I ask them to write something does just like quick, you know, typically just write something out quickly, incomplete sentences, pair, you know, that doesn't, you know, rambling sentences, doesn't capitalize anything. But all of a sudden the next day when I load up Google Docs, and I notice that they've got this immaculate written piece, um, uh, that might lead to a discussion, right? That might lead to a discussion there. Um, I will say this, most school district, right? Yeah, <laughs> most school districts, um, I don't know if this is, you know, in Fayette County, for example, where I teach, um, the chat GPT and a lot of these image generate, they're open for teachers, but not for students. And uh, most, on most uh, Chromebooks, like district wide, they've got Chat GPT blocked, which honestly, until a district figure out an easy way, now there are like AI detectors and things like that, Chat GPT zero is one, um, but uh, until districts can get a handle um, on what, you know, on how to go about detecting this stuff, 
I'm not sure what the answer to that question is. Like the only thing that I can think of um, is, uh, yeah, and Tiffany just created, threw a great thing in there. She says, is this a great way to teach ethics on, you know, early on with digital citizenship? A hundred percent. But, um, you know, I, to be honest, I'm not sure the answer to that question. And frankly, I don't think anybody is. Like I'm looking at this as, um, I'm looking at this tool as a way where one, it can help me as a teacher, it can help me as an educator. And by the way, feel free to keep the chat going. I know we've got some people in there that have some great questions. And if you know the answer to those questions, if you're a librarian, feel free to chime in there because um, there's definitely some things to talk about. Now, in addition to text generator apps that exist, and we'll talk, we'll talk about some classroom ideas here in a second, but in addition to text generating apps, there's also image generating apps. Um, one of them, that this, you know, the two biggest ones, one is called Dolly, which um, I used to create this one. That's the one that OpenAI created. Um, and the other one is called Midjourney, which runs through the Discord app. And then I, I can, once we're done, I, I forgot to post a link. Um, I'll put a link in the chat about, um, you know, how to use Midjourney. It's free uh, well, for the first 50 images that you create. Then there's like a small fee that you can pay. But uh, 100%, Tammy, it, it actually is. It's one of the top five reasons until they can get a handle on that. Um, but anyway, so want to have some fun here just to kind of show you some of the just give you some classroom ideas that you can do um, with open uh, with uh, image generator apps, and we'll kind of roll with this from here. But um, in the chat, oh sorry, not in the chat, on the screen share that I've got right there, um, using the app called OpenAI, uh, using Dolly, I uh, I asked it to create an image for me. And the text that I asked it to do created this picture, right? Created this picture. Um, so just to kind of, uh, just for fun, and by the way, as I teach fifth grade, so this is a totally an indoor activity, indoor recess activity for me. I hate indoor recess. It's the bane of my existence. Um, but uh, just for fun, throw into the chat, what do you think I asked? Or what do you think I used Dolly, which is the image generator app, what do you think I asked it to do to create this image? What text did I tell it to do? Throw it in the chat. So it looks like somebody there gets some gloves on, glasses, some kind of long trench coat. I always thought it looked like a DeLorean in the background there. Oops, are we thinking? Two by two, hands of blue, Dr. House. Wait, really, Dr. House? That's such a cool name. Create an image of a suspicious man in the style of a traditional painting. Ooh, Pauline's done this. something about Back to the Future. It does look like a DeLorean. Back to the Future. It does. It's not. Actually, what I asked it to do, I, I, I said, um, <laughs> create an image of a supervillain who lives in Kentucky. Although summer, a post-apocalyptic post farm landscape with man in suit wearing blue gloves. Honestly, it might hit something... <laughs> Similar, yeah, and Melinda brought up a good point. Um, uh, Adobe Firefly, you're going to see more and more of this image generating stuff that exists out there. Let's try one more. Now that you see it, right? So that was the prompt I typed in on the image generator app that created that. So, what about this one? What do you think I, I typed in to uh, to make to make this image appear? Need to zoom in on you, Ken. So uh, why y'all are guessing that, Jennifer asked a question. She said, if you did it again, we'll give you the same image or a different one. Um, sometimes it's similar, but it's not the same one. And once I, I show you these three images here in a second, I'll, um, I'll show you how uh, Midjourney works. Um, and I'll even, if I should have time to show you Adobe Firefly as well, which is another, a guinea pig derby. Thank James has pasted a link to the Adobe version of Adobe Firefly in there. Um, shocked people and hamsters in a huge court case. Hamsters at a burlesque show. <laughs> Let's keep it PG. Let's keep it PG here. All right. So, uh, oh, okay. Dr. House. Two large hamsters watching the Kentucky Derby was what I asked it to do. And it made that, right? All right. One more just for fun. Then I'll show you how this works. Um, so in case you're listening, you, it's some kind of dinosaur. There, there's some kind of automobile. 
behind the scenes. What do you think I typed in um, to make Dinosaur Driver? Well, now I just watched the movie Baby Driver again this past week. Great rewatchable movie, by the way. T-Rex Car Valet, 19 T-Rex Butler. The T-Rex in the current world, Dapper Dinosaur. <laughs> What's that? What's that line from um, uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou? Dapper Dan, man, love that. All right, so I like puns. Sorry if you've never met me before. I like I like puns. And for this, I said um, a Jurassic Park where dinosaurs park cars instead of being in an actual park, and it made this right. So you've seen Chat GPT, right? You've seen Chat GPT, um, but one of the other big um, image generator apps that exists. Um, and James pasted a link to Adobe Firefly. I wanted to show you Midjourney because there's just another one that exists. Um, Midjourney is another one that exists that that's out there. Um, it's the first 50, I think you get like 50 images for free that you can make. And the people ask all the time, like, well, why do you got to pay for it? The amount of computing power that it takes to create these images is massive. Um, and a lot of these companies, they're running off of a really, really small server uh, or their servers they have to expand their size and stuff. Um, and I read, I was reading an article a few months back about just the amount of water it takes to cool some of these servers down. It, it's ridiculous. So um, Midjourney is one, you can make an account on it. It's a little strange to use, right? Because once you make an account, um, it, it uh, adds you to Discord, right? Which again, if you've never used Discord before, um, Discord is like a chat app. A lot of people who are gamers, I'm not a gamer, but a lot of people who are gamers, they might be familiar with it. But Midjourney, when you add it, it actually adds the little app over here. Um, they've got it decorated for Pride Month right now. But um, then what you do is you jump into one of the rooms, right? Jumps into one of the rooms. And then down here at the bottom, where it says message, I can now uh, enter different commands to make an image appear. And so um, have some fun in the chat, right? <laughs> James, shameless plug, I love it. In the chat, go ahead and type in something. You, you saw three prompts a second ago that I, that, that I typed in to make it create those. Hey, in the chat, what do you wanna see? Let's do, um, I'm going to ISTE in, in a few weeks. So let's do, let's start with, um, you know, maybe uh, let's go Rocky, Oh, let's go the rock. Here we go. The rock's fun. The rock dot 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 dot. What is the rock going to do? I like Dwayne the Rock Johnson mostly because like he came of age right as I was like in my uh, teenager. So I like the rock. Uh, the rock teaching monkey business. The rock unicorn mermaid. The rock gets a hip replacement. Oh, the rock doing Rocky Balboa training. Uh, the rock begging Vin Diesel to save his career. <laughs> What, what fast are they on? Fast X9? I don't even know. They're so bad. I, the last one I watched was the one with a flying car. And I'm like, I'm done. Oh, I like that one. The Rock learns how to play the piano. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I've got a, you know, just, it's almost like a code. So I type in slash imagine, and I'll say like, oh, you know this. So I'll do imagine the Rock. We'll say, we'll say the wrestler, the Rock. Oh, well, no, we can actually say, you know, we'll say the Rock. I don't know. The Rock learning how to play the piano, right? P-I-N-O, all right. So I'll press enter. Now this part, you know, usually takes like minute, 30 seconds. Um, I'm gonna let that happen behind the scene, right? Oh, looks like it might already be done here. Let's see, it might already be done. Go ahead here, I'll pop in there. So um, I'm gonna let that run behind the scene and you'll see what's happening. Let me kind of slide this over here. Um, you actually get to watch the image it created, right? You actually get to watch the image get created. Oh my gosh, there's two of the rocks. That's kind of freaky. Uh, oh, he's learning how to play. It's supposed to be his tutor that's watching him there. But um, anyway, so it went ahead and it made this image. And uh, again, we could do lots of stuff with this, but there you go, right? So it just went and made that image. You can do what's called upscale it. If you notice, it gives you four because it recognizes that, hey, you might not use all of these, right? Or maybe there's one that you want as a high resolution file. So what you can do, you can just click, oops, sorry. You can just click, let me go back to it there. Sorry, there it is. So you can choose which one of these you like the best. I kind of like this one, 
in the bottom right. So that we're going to upscale version three. I'm going to click that. And then it's going to go and it's going to give me a high resolution version of that image. And now I've got Dwayne The Rock Johnson learning how to play piano, right? Um, how popular do you have to be for it to know you? So um, for celebrity, like celebrities work, I know that. Like if you typed Tom Brady holding an actual goat or something, like it would do that. What I always think is really, really interesting, um, right? Yeah, I know. So M M Mona, I apologize if I mispronounced your name, brought up a great point. She's like, we already have a flood of fake images, right? Um, so I think this speaks to the fact that we need to be aware and we need to be teaching our students that this stuff exists. And if there's ever a time to be focusing on, um, you know, whether something's authentic and think of even with the text generators like ChatGPT and Google Bard, because, um, you know, I just, it's actually blocked in my school. That's kind of awkward. I tried to look it up. I'm out of school today. Um, it's so important that we teach students, um, I mean, I know I should, I, I know y'all librarians that are on here call it the CARP test, but I, I secretly call it the CRAP test. Um, but uh, it's so important that we teach students how to trust, you know, uh, to what valid sources, valid image, like what makes something authentic. Um, because like, look, that image was made in 20 seconds, right? At best. Um, it, it definitely is, it definitely is a challenge. And honestly, it's one of the reasons why I want to know so much about how these tools work, just so that way, um, when they, um, as they become more and more prevalent, um, I, you know, I, I can start to question and start to realize like what's real. Um, so Rachel asked a question, can you submit an image to see if it generated it? Not yet. Um, not yet, but there are, I mean, there are different tests that you can do on this one. It's not too bad, but like, you know, if you go ahead and look at the fingers, the fingers are always weird on these. Let me see if I can jump back to that original image that it made it. I wonder if one of them, the fingers look a little strange. Um, it, it doesn't do fingers very well. That's always, well, let's see. Oh, that one's all right. Oh, look, look this is hands kind of in the piano there. Nobody would teach piano like that. So that, oh, look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, like swollen up there. So, you know, there's just different things that you can start to look for. A lot of times if you've, and, and some they have, um, a lot of times if you look behind the scenes, like what's going on well, teeth, all that stuff. And two, a lot of times, like um, I've noticed this, it'll do the, like if an image generator, it'll do it really clear for the people in the front of the image. If you look behind, that's when things really start to look pixelated and freaky. Um, can logos be incorporated in the images? So what I think is interesting, right? It doesn't do, none of the image generated stuff do brands. Um, as a matter of fact, if you were to ask it to like write a chalkboard where math problems being solved, it won't even put real letters on the board. It actually has this made up language. Um, uh, it actually has like this made up language. It kind of looks like, and I'm not a huge Star Wars fan, but it kind of looks like, you know, in Star Wars, that made up language, I think it's called Arabish, Arabish, Aruba. I don't know how to pronounce it. I've only read it. Um, but it, it looks very, very similar to, to that. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just something else to kind to, to look for. So anyway, so we've got about 20, 25 minutes left now that I've significantly terrified all of you who have never seen this stuff before. Um, I wanted to like actually talk about, all right, so what are some classroom uses, right? And if you've used this, by the way, if you use any AI in the past year, I mean, even think of the, um, even think of um, like the images that we just had it create hey, you know, as a, as a fifth grade teacher, I do a lot of writing um, and creative writing, I feel like is really important. Who's to say you couldn't have like um, maybe once a week have students submit writing ideas or image generating ideas that you want to see a picture created and they can either submit that pencil and paper, maybe once a week you go in and you pull that out and you say, oh, create this image and then boom, you've got a writing prompt that you can do. I right, put that up on the board. Hey, here's a, a squirrel on a raft in the middle of the ocean. Hey, tell this story. What happened here? Um, but anyway, so what I wanted to uh, talk about next, right? Um, 
so wait, actually, I wanted to address, and I don't know your first name, A. Peyton. I'm just going to call you A. Peyton there. Um, but uh, they had a great question about how do you use like image generation stuff in PowerPoint or Google Slides? So Canva, right, actually already has like an image generator thing built into it. Um, if you've used Adobe Express, which again, everybody has their favorites. I like Adobe Express better than Canva, but it's because I like Adobe products. Um, Adobe Express actually has built into it, um, you know, image generating stuff as well. So if you like just start from, oops, sorry. Um, if you have like an image or something that you want to create, it's got stuff that's kind of built into it. I'm just trying to find a good, here you go. So it has like a text to image thing built in. So if I were to say like a lion, oops, sorry, a lion, oops, sorry, lion. How about I spell that right? A lion running marathon. All right, it'll go ahead and it'll create an image. And honestly, uh, some of you, I saw that in the chat earlier, were asking about, um, come on, we're asking about like, don't spoil my presentation. Some of y'all were asking about um, image, images and things like that. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, where did they train this AI image stuff on? One of the th things I really like about Adobe Express is they used all Creative Commons images. They used things that they had permission to use, right? So it just went and made this defined lion image right here. Um, so, you know, you can turn something like this into a slideshow. I would not be surprised, A. Hey, Peyton, if when the next, I mean, honestly, maybe a month or two, maybe even before that, you start to see built into Google Slides, not just a a um, not just like a, a make a slideshow, like create a slideshow about the history of I don't know Poland or whatever, and it will make a ten slide slideshow about it. In addition to the text, I wouldn't be surprised if it started to create images as well. Um, but anyway, so like th this kind of image stuff, this text generator stuff, like you will start to see more and more of these things appear um, across a lot of apps. Um, but anyway, so we've got about fifteen minutes left. Um, I just wanted to, like, I've got a whole bunch of ideas, you know, I'll, I'll be shameless and say like, this is actually in a book that's coming out um, about a month that, that I've written, but uh, I wanted to share just a few practical classroom uses um, that aren't just the students, um, you know, using chat GPT or an image generator app to do the work for them. I wanted, I wanted to think like, all right, so as a classroom teacher, what's a practical activity that you can do? Um, to teach content, right? That also kind of, in, that incorporates AI. Um, one of my favorites, and I actually have a, a, a eighth grade, not physics, eighth grade science teacher. I forget what subject it is. He was the 2021 uh, Nebraska Teacher of the Year who did this activity. Um, and I call it on-the-fly science, right? I call it on-the-fly science. Um, you know, one, resources are always... Um, the reason why I do this activity is I understand that resources and things are often, you know, bare bones. So right here, this is what's called a prompt, right? And I'm actually gonna go ahead and jump into, oh wait, I'm on the wrong, it's fine. Um, so what, uh, so do me a favor, just in the chat right now, write down one thing that you have either in your classroom or in your library. If you wanna write down more than one thing, that's fine. but. In the chat where it says meeting chat, write down one thing. It can be like a weird gift that a student gave you six months ago. It can be, you know, maybe you're cleaning out your desk at the end of the year. Like, oh, that's where that Matchbox car went. Um, laser cutter, stuffed rabbit, pool noodles. All right. All right. So lots of ideas there. So the idea is, all right, I'm going to go ahead and back into chat, chat GPT. Um, and all this stuff's pop, popping in there now. So I'm going to say the, the prompt that I'm going to jump into, right? Again, just trying to come up with a, a quick lesson plan idea. I am a, we'll say, seventh grade science teacher um, trying to teach my students about, I think I'd in the, we'll say Newton's, we'll do, uh, I did second in the prompt, Newton's third law of motion. Oops, motion. Uh, I have in my classroom, let's see what we got here, the book, oops, sorry, the book, green eggs and ham, what else I got, a tape dispenser, what else, artificial plants, what else I got there, just looking through here, jawbreakers, Ooh, a rainbow circle puzzle, say a uh, 
a circle puzzle, jawbreakers, ouch, jawbreakers. I think I saw like a car. Let's see, water damage, an old fashioned tomato pin cushion. Those reminded my grandma. She actually just passed away like six months ago. And that was when we, when we went to clean out our house, I found that. Um, a print of a dog wearing glasses like my own, I'll say, and pencils, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna, so I just, hey, copied all this stuff in. I'm gonna say, design a lesson that I can do using these materials to teach my students Newton's third law. Boom, so there's my prompt. I'm gonna type it in. Now, it's gonna tell me what materials to use right um gives you an introduction gives you oh it's actually going to use green eggs and ham right which i think is kind of interesting read a few page aloud pausing so it looks like in this lesson let's see for every action equal reaction uh let's see use the tape dispenser okay well, i'm wondering so what's interesting in this right it looks like what it wanted you to do you know to you know it's got you reading green eggs and ham but it's kind of like, yeah, don't know if that's necessarily it. Pokemon cards, I'm sure. Tisa, I apologize for mispronouncing your name. Um, you know, those are your Pokemon cards, right? You didn't put them in your Maybox. Uh, repeat the demonstration, use the tape. Okay, action and reaction forces. So, you know, as I'm reading through this, I'm like, you know what? It mentioned reading Green Eggs and Ham at the start, but not sure that that necessarily fits in with what I'm looking for. So remember, this is a chat. So one, if as I after I look through this lesson, I'm like, Ugh, yeah, um, that's not bad. so okay. So PJ said, hey, will it link the plans to Kentucky standards? Uh, now I can say, can you link these plans to the NGSS standards? Okay, boom. There you go. So now we'll go and we'll go ahead and we'll tell you the parts of it that go along with it. Right. And the nice part is too, like I know a lot of you that maybe you have like that that digital thing or that paper copy of standards that were passed out. You can copy all of those. You can just have a chat going that says, like, hey, here's the standards I'm trying to teach. Here's the materials I have. And you tie this to this. And then remember all this stuff, I can just copy and paste this. I'm just pasting in the chat here. Um, I can just copy and paste this wherever, paste it onto a Google Doc, and boom, like. I've just, you know, you know that six day deconstructing standard at workshop that we love doing. Ta da, there you go. Right. Um, and the nice part is too, like, let's say you design, you have got, you've got an idea. Oh man, I've got this great art project that I want to do where I have my students recreate works of art and then they write about it, but I'm not sure what eighth grade standards that aligns with. But guess what? You can say, like, hey, here's the act, here's the thing I want to do. Can you search at the Common Core standards or whatever and connect this to this project? It'll do it. Now, keep in mind, it's not perfect, right? Like the green eggs and ham thing that popped up. It said, read it, but it never really connected it back to it. So, um, all right. So it's never really connects it back to it. So you don't have to use everything. And Jessica, that's a great question, right? Um, but again, I look at it this way. Like I'm just using a tool that's available, you know, there's a great chance that what it spits out, it's just like, you know what, this isn't the lesson that I thought it would be. And I'm going to go with this old faithful. And honestly, a lot of times, it's like I read a great, um, I read a great article. I want to say it was um, back in January, it was right after the new year. But it was, it was an interesting point. It's like, hey, are we just editors now? Or are we just finding out new ways to be creative? Um, and what I think is interesting, right? is I'm not claiming that this work, like this thing is my own. Um, like if a student were to just go ahead and copy a thing in the chat GPT and say, hey, make this, you know, write this answer, write this response really quick, um, then um, and they claim that it was their own work. I think that's a lot different than just me using a tool to come up with some lesson idea there, right? Um, anyway, all right. So just one little simple idea, but you could use that for anything. Like you could even use that for some creative writing prompts that go along with it. Um, all right, another quick idea, right? Um, you know, I, I teach fifth grade. So uh, I always say the one skill that I did not learn how to do until I was an adult was learn how to get up in front of others and, uh, and speak, right? And talk. 
Um, and one of the reasons why is because I was never given an opportunity. And if it was, it was either, I think these are important speeches or important things to memorize, but it was either, you know, the preamble to the constitution, which I think is important, Gettysburg Address, a part of Dr. Martin Luther King's speech, you know, which I feel like are important, but I was never really given a fun opportunity to stand up and talk in front of my classmates. So just another fun little simple idea that you can do. Um, you can take a famous speech, right? And um, I'm going to take one of my favorite speeches from films. We'll say, um, y'all remember the movie Independence Day? So we're going to go um, Independence Day. I misspelled that on purpose. President speech at end. Go ahead and get there, right? All right. So I'm going to go here. We'll find the, the text to the speech. Here it is, right? Um, so here's the full text of the speech. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this. Copy that whole text there, right? But you can go ahead and remix this. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to start a new chat. And I'm going to say, read this speech from the movie Independence Day, right? Um, rewrite it though in the style of so you can now do anything. You could say Yoda from Star Wars. Uh, misspelled it there. Yoda from Star Wars. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a colon. You don't have to, I just do it for my brain. That way the speech starts. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and paste the text in there. It does have the um, the time stamps in there, like in the little YouTube clip that's on there. I'll actually keep it on there because I'm interested to see what it does. Um, so now it's gonna rewrite this as if it was Yoda that was the one saying it. So I'm gonna press enter. Morning, good morning. Uh, let's see, less than an hour passed. I can't do a Yoda impression. Maybe if you can, you can do this. Mankind, that word today, new meaning it should hold for all. I can almost picture a little Yoda, Yoda given that right there, right? You can do it anything. Maybe there's, maybe you're an English teacher, you're trying to take dialect, you're trying to, um, you know, maybe you want to go over the top and you can say like, now rewrite this again, but include, I don't know, way too many similes and metaphors, whatever. You can gonna go ahead and let's see. As the sun rises, like a symphony of hope within the hour, aerial crafts from all, whatever, right? Um, is there a limit of how many prompts? Uh, Jennifer just asked a question. You can ask with a free version. Um, so it depends what I've learned, right? If you don't pay for the premium edition, um, whenever their servers hit capacity, um, whenever their servers hit capacity, or if you try to do too much, it really, really slows it down, um, or they, um, uh, or they just don't give you access to it. Now, honestly, it's it's just their way of making money, and I hate that, but you know that's just how it works. Um, but uh, and I look at it this way, like you know, if if it's, you don't always have to do this stuff live with your students, right? A lot of the stuff you can do if you're trying to like remix some talks, remix some speeches, you're just doing your planning, maybe some of your after school time, whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, so just like with anything on the internet, have a fail safe, like something like, all right, if this doesn't work, we're going to do, do this instead. But, you know, now I've got a fun little speech. I can go ahead and um, uh, go ahead and, and roll with that there. Again, a few other different suggestions. This would be one. And I know I just said like, hey, don't do this live, but you know, this is just another idea that you could do. Um, again, the le like legally, you have to be 13, have an open AI account. So if you're an elementary school teacher and this is not blocked for your students, if you see students using it and they're 10, you're like, no, you're not, you're not supposed to do that. Or definitely talk to your school, like IT people and say, hey, you know, this is open for some reason for the elementary school kids in my classroom. Can we block that? Um, but even for, for older kids, like figuring out a way to use the tool to help them either connect with something or if there's a standard or something that goes, that goes back to them. Um, but anyway, so let me kind of jump with this here. Uh, I like to think of this, I, I like to call this like interacting with, oh, what's up? Ultra realistic image. Let me go ahead and close that out there. All right. So another idea that you can do with this stuff. Maybe you're trying to have the students interact with somebody famous. I mean, you can throw it in the chat. Like who's somebody famous that you wanna talk with? Can be a movie star, can be a historical figure. Um, 
it, it can be, you know, the, earlier somebody asked, well, like, who does it know? Um, you know, whatever, you can just throw that in the chat. Uh, Taylor Swift, the server error. Yeah, so Tammy, sometimes it gives that server error. That means like, hey, they're at capacity, right? Uh, okay, we'll, we'll do, you know, you can do presidents. You can do like, you know, Alexander the Great. Um, Mona, just for fun, we'll do Taylor Swift. We'll say, uh, pretend you are Taylor Swift, um, the eighth grade, oops, sorry, the eighth grade students in my class want to ask you questions about your, I don't know, uh, uh, ask you questions, respond to their questions as if you are actually Taylor Swift. Okay, boom. All right. So if you notice, remember, sometimes chat GPT doesn't understand what you're asking it to do. So the little prompt that I just typed in there, it said like, well, based on what you told me, I think you want me to come up with some fake student questions, right? So it actually made some fake student stuff there. Um, you could do Darwin. Anybody got a question you want to ask Taylor Swift? Um, now, what's interesting, right? Uh, OpenAI chat GPT-3, um, the last, the latest model that was trained on was in September of 2021, right? So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you ask it about, hey, how's your ERAs tour going? Um, it won't know what that's talking about. But if you were to ask it, right, um, I don't know, uh, tell me what's, you know, tell me what inspired you to start writing songs. I don't know, go ahead and throw that in there. Uh, growing up, listening to a wide range of music, yada, yada, yada. I mean, you could, I've seen, I've heard of teachers. I have not done this because I didn't come up with this until after school got out. But uh, I do know there are teachers that what they'll do, like, hey, they'll throw that up on the board. Maybe they're trying to learn about Frederick Douglass. They're trying to learn about whatever, because this has been trained on billions of lines of text. Um, but uh, you can go ahead and give your students some chance to ask some questions and see what pops up, right? Um, just in the interest of time, normally, by the way, this is honestly my favorite thing to do with it. Um, if you are an elementary school or a middle school teacher, um, this is a lot of fun. Um, I call it playwriting. It's, it's a terrible pun, but P-L-A-I, sorry, I'm a dad, you just got to roll with that, uh, playwriting. Uh, but the idea behind it is you actually write, use AI to write on the fly, on the fly plays right? But then the nice part is what you can do is you ask your students to, um, to be a part of it, right? So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, oh, never mind. I'll just, yes, thank you, Melissa. I, I too love the dad jokes. Learn from the best, my dad. But um, so here's what we're going we're gonna to do. And I'm just a quick classroom example. Dad AI jokes are the best. I feel you, Tim Jones. So we're going to say, write the first, oops, I write, oops, ah, write the first scene of a three scene play. Uh, if you wanna be in the play, just go ahead and say me in the chat. I'll include you over there. If you wanna be in the play, let's go ahead and write your name there. Um, in the play include, we'll say third grade students named. I'm gonna put you in there. James, Jessica, Sharmika. I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Sharmika, and we'll just go Mr. Piercy. Um, it was a typical day in the classroom when all of the sudden, what do you want to happen? Throw it in the chat. Oh, I'll tell you what, uh, Mona just said Nikola Tesla. When all of a sudden, Nikola Tesla shows up and starts shooting electricity, whatever. Okay, so go ahead in there. It's going to write the play. Now, this is super fun to do with your class because what you can do, you actually do it live, right? Um, now, keep in mind, it's only going to write the first scene of the play for us, but if you notice, it ends with to be continued. So I could tell it to say, now write scene two. I could also tell it, now write scene two, but include the theme of friendship in this play, or if there's a, a, a theme that you're trying to, to have them identify with, you can have it to do that, right? You have it to do that. Um, or you can do what I ended up doing. As a class, we used AI to write the first two scenes of the play. And then I turned it into a creative writing activity. I went and copied what the play was. 
right? Went and copied that, went into Google Docs, copied the entire thing over onto a Google Doc. And by the way, one thing I do like that it does is if you copy it over, there you go, it's now in there. I went and I passed it out to my students in Google Classroom said, hey, here's the play that you just performed. Sometimes it's super silly, whatever it is. Um, here's the play that we just performed that we just wrote. And now what I want you all to do, right? Now what I want you all to do is to write the what? ending. How do you want this play to end, right? How do you want this play to end? And there's a thousand different ways that that could go. But again, you're still using the AI. You're still, you know, it's the fun part is kids get up and present it. It's on the fly. You never know what, what's going to pop up. One little trick that I like to do, if you're like me and you're like, oh man, I'm worried what might appear. Um, typically in the, in the chat, I'll throw like, make sure that this is appropriate for fourth graders. A lot of times if you throw that in, that, that makes sure nothing super weird happens. Um, but uh, anyway, a lot of fun. Still turns into a creative writing activity at the end. And the students also get a chance to get up, present, do anything with it. Now, last thing, and then I'll kind of wrap up here. Um, I won't do a live demo because I steer a little bit short on time, but for those older students, um, if they have like some debate prep or something like that coming up, um, hey, they can, you can, or if they want, if they, if they can have an account, so, hey, I'm a 10th grade student I'm about to participate in a debate on blank. Uh, you know, the financial, uh, you know, relevance of solar panels, whether or not it's worth it, I think it is, but you know, whether or not it's worth, but what's important is you can say like, well, give me the, the points and the counterpoints, help me prepare, right? Something like that is, is super, super easy. And it's uh, very, very simple to show students how to use that. So um, before I go, just to kind of put this out there, I do have, I, I hate doing this, and James, who's in the chat, knows that I hate doing this, but I do have a book that's coming out in the next month about uh, different strategies for using artificial intelligence in the classroom. Um, a lot of the ideas that with I just shared, are if you scan that QR code, it'll take you there. Um, also, the link to this presentation I'll go ahead and I'll throw it in the chat. It's just resources.mrpiercy.com slash AI. Watch the spelling of my last name. You can go there and open that up. And in case you did not figure it out, you know, uh, the title of this presentation was Dr. Strangelove, which you've never seen in that movie. Go ahead and watch it. It's held up phenomenally. Um, every single image that's in this presentation, and I mean every single image, whether it's these ones, these Dr. Strangelove ones, um, or those ones that, like the kids in the classroom, every single one of these was an image created by AI. Every single one. I use MidJourney for it. And what I'm interested is, anybody pick up on it? If you did not, you can go ahead and admit it. Or if you don't want to admit it, that's totally fine. But all of these images I used, I created, um, used MidJourney to create them. And now that I've told you that, it's like, oh, well, maybe, you know, just something, something to think about there, right? Yeah, but they did look high definition, right? But it's part of the fun, I guess, behind it. But anyway, so um, thank you all so much. I'd love to connect with you online. If you're on Twitter, I'm at Mr. Piercy, uh, at M-R-P-I-E-R-C-E-Y. -P -I -E um, it's a uh, name of my book. It's 50 Strategies for Incorporating AI into the Classroom. But uh, I know they look legitimate, right? They definitely look legitimate. Thank you all so much. Enjoy your next presentation. Yay!